Hello, I'm Emma. And then Tim is the Singapore Red Cross. Hi, I'm Aim. I'm Emma's friend and we're here as first time blood donors and we're so excited to share our blood journey with you guys today. Before heading down to make a donation, it's recommended that you visit HSA's website to take an eligibility quiz. Check out HSA's website for more information. The link is in the description below. Let's go! Yay! At the pre-registration counter, your temperature is taken and you will be asked to fill out a COVID questionnaire. Here's the first step of your blood donation journey. If you have booked an appointment through the Donate Blood app and completed the medical questionnaire online, you don't have to fill out the questionnaire on site and can proceed straight to the registration counter. Did you know that you can donate blood once you turn 16? Remember to bring along a photo ID and a signed parental consent form if you are aged 17 and below. I'm given a first-time donor sticker and I hope that the nurses will be extra gentle with me. Now, onto the blood testing area. So this is the blood testing area where they check your weight and your haemoglobin levels. I put in a lot of effort to ensure that my haemoglobin levels will be sufficiently high this time. Fingers crossed! To avoid making an unnecessary trip down, I suggest doing some pre-donation prep work starting a week before your donation. This includes drinking plenty of water, getting sufficient rest, eating plenty of iron-rich food, and taking your iron tablets. Most importantly, ensure that you do not donate blood on an empty stomach. The prick test was rather daunting the first time I did it, but it does not hurt at all and feels like an end bite. If your haemoglobin levels are too low on your day of donation, fret not. The blood bank has resources such as meal recipes and a list of iron-rich foods for you to consume before your next donation. Your privacy in the medical screening room is ensured when the doctor interviews you as an added precaution to ensure that your blood is safe for use. Once you have been certified to be eligible to donate blood, head over to the donation room. While the nurse is getting ready, you will be asked to continually squeeze a stress ball during your donation to increase blood flow. Following which, a local anaesthetic will be injected to ensure that you feel minimal pain during the donation. While I did feel the insertion of the anesthesia needle, I honestly found it less painful than a regular vaccine. After the anesthesia injection, 5 minutes is required for the anaesthetic to take effect before you begin the drawing of blood. It's happening! The blood donation needle looks rather daunting, but you will honestly not feel the slightest bit of pain thanks to the anesthesia applied. Now that's one common misconception about blood donation busted. Continually squeeze the stress ball to ensure that blood flow is consistent and blood clots do not form. Now that the blood has been drawn, bandaging starts. Remember to hashtag bandage heroes and tag BB at Hey Blood Buddy, when you share this with your friends on social media. The bandage is pretty cool and matches my outfit. It feels a bit like a badge of honour. And ensure that you leave your bandage on for at least 4 hours. After the bandaging is done, you will remain seated another 3 minutes to ensure that all is well. Remember to slowly stand up after. I've just completed my donation and at HSA, you get to redeem a food and drink item from the Platelet Cafe. Thanks for accompanying me to donate blood today. The process was so smooth from start to finish. You're welcome, Emma. I can't wait to plan our next donation in the next few months. See you soon! Bye! Bye!